Hello, everybody. Um, this is Buddy Oliver with Patent Electronics. We're going to give uh, people just a few more minutes uh, to arrive. We have people um, coming in right now. I'm just going to give them about two minutes, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome to anybody that's just joined us. We're just going to give just a couple, just like another minute. Um, we're getting a steady stream of attendees here. I just want to have everybody have a chance to, to get started with us. Okay, well, it looks like things are uh, filling up pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Welcome everybody to our um, Patent Electronics webinar on, we're gonna be discussing Microsoft Teams direct routing and, and how that applies to our product portfolio. My name's Buddy Oliver. I'm Vice, Vice President of Product Management here at Patent. <clears throat> I'm gonna just dive right in. So today we're going to talk about, oh, actually, I'm joined with uh, Miklos Sabo, uh, who is one of our uh, FAEs um, working out of Europe. Um, he's going to be handling some of the technical stuff. Uh, we'll introduce him in a minute. Um, so I'm going to briefly just kind of, for those uh, who may not be fully familiar with Patton, I'm just going to do a really quick overview of who Patton is. And then we're going to turn it over to Miklos, who's going to talk about uh, uh, direct routing, sort of some of the uh, technology behind that and some applications. We'll take a look at our patent portfolio, um, show some applications, uh, some of the features and benefits of uh, the patent team solution. And then we'll go ahead and talk about licensing and how you go ahead um, and, and get teams working on your patent devices. So I'm just jump right in who we are. Our patent, for those of you that again are not familiar with patent, uh, we are a multinational company that uh, started in the late 80s with 35 years experience in engineering and manufacturing communication products. Um, the company was started by you know, Bert and Bobby Patton, um, like I said, back in the late 80s, making uh, industrial products, you know, modems, uh, adapters, little widgets, things that you would use in industrial uh, applications. About 15 years ago or so, they acquired a company called In-Out Networks out of Bern, Switzerland, who were making some very exciting uh, cutting edge voice over IP products. Um, that, of course, led us into this market, um, uh, which is now sort of our primary market is the voice over IP space. And then more recently in 2017, uh, Patton acquired my company, which is Fiberplex Technologies, which um, we brought uh, fiber connectivity, some government cyber applications, but, uh, but all, more importantly to this discussion, uh, some pro AV um, slash UC type products, which sort of expanded our, our portfolio of UC offerings. Um, and you'll be, if you follow Patton at all, we'll be uh, introducing some really exciting video stuff in that, in that realm as well. But for the um, subject of this webinar, we're talking about our voice over IP portfolio. Um, we have um, our headquarters are here in the U.S. on the East Coast, which is where we do all of our manufacturing. Uh, we have offices in Bern and Budapest. Our Bern office is our software competency center, uh, where the majority of our software engineers work, um, who are actively developing all these great solutions, uh, including our cloud platform, which if you're not familiar with that, we'll touch on that just briefly here in this, but we have some great resources uh, about our cloud platform and, and they also are working on our, our 
virtual SBC product, or we call a virtual smart node product. Um, so that's sort of what who we are and what we do uh, in, a, in a really small nutshell. Um, probably spend the whole webinar talking about that, but that, that's not what we're here for. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over now, uh, turn the control over to Miklos, who will then step us through the subject today. Go ahead, Miklos. Thank you, buddy. Welcome, everybody, on this webinar today. Uh, before we are jumping on discussing what is the direct routing means in terms of Microsoft, I kindly would like uh, I would like you to ask to look into the panel, uh, this go to webinar panel. You join this webinar, and on the question under the question section, you would be able to ask directly the questions towards to us, and we will uh, answer those questions live after the webinar after the slide desk. So. Let's jump into the Microsoft Direct Routing. What does it mean? So Direct Routing is essentially a feature which allows, the, uh, allows to connect the certified SBC uh, to the Microsoft phone system services. Why you would like to have a certified SBC in the uh, Microsoft phone system services? Because you would like to connect different type of clients, different kind of uh, telephony services and stuff like that. So basically, with the direct routing feature, uh, you can access to the uh, Microsoft Teams from directly from your computer with the Microsoft Teams client, or from the switched network, the telephony switch network, or from your from your SIP business telephony services or UC services, uh, how you call it. Also, uh, the Microsoft direct routing is providing additional security on your on your voice services. So basically, uh, it requires SIP TLS and SRTP on the media level. All right, so let's look into some sort of history, what we uh, did here. I um, just hold on for a second. Um, I still don't have the remote. All right, so now, now we have the slide. So sorry for that. It's just a little technical difficulties here. So regarding to history of the Microsoft Teams certification, as it's spanning back for over a decade, uh, the history of what we are doing with Microsoft and its services, the predecessors of the Microsoft Teams, uh, some of you may remember from the old time that they called very similar service as the Microsoft Teams currently as an office communicator suit. It's spanning back to 2007. We already started to have our, our gateway portfolio certified for this service. Of course, on that time, we were not talking about uh, any uh, cloud-based solution. Office Communicator Suite was purely on-premise solution, which Microsoft, uh, a few years later, uh, renamed or restructured a little bit, and they started to call it as Microsoft Link Server. So we, of course, we were pursuing the certification for this new record uh, uh, solution uh, it's from 2010 and 2013 and after the acquisition of the Skype uh, Microsoft started to rename again the service to Skype for business which already started to have two versions so one of the version was an on-premise version the other version was a, a cloud version so for the Skype for business we already had some sort of cloud connection uh, and moving to, moving ahead, Microsoft changed again the name of the of the service. Now it's uh, Microsoft Teams, and basically Microsoft switched from the on-premise solution completely to the cloud-based solution. And here we are today. So basically, we have all of our gateway and all of our SBC products, which are running the Trinity software certified for Microsoft Teams. All right, uh, just take a look on the portfolio. Uh, the, uh, it looks a little bit overwhelming, but uh, I just would like to highlight some products from our portfolio. This is the complete portfolio for our SBC products, and with the pur purple icons on top of the uh, on top of the products, you see that these are basically the products which are certified for Microsoft Teams. You also notice that uh, some of the products has some different icons on top of them which marked with gray, uh, we call those products as ready for Microsoft Teams. <clears throat> the reason is that either uh, they are in the funnel to be certified or uh, they are having some drawbacks like, uh, uh, which is coming very soon, the transcoding in the case of our virtual solution. 
So basically, uh, without, uh, without going into the really details of what the products are doing, uh, we, are, we are differentiating the products as a pure software solution, which you can see on the first column. This is the virtual smart node, and the rest are hardware-based products. And from the hardware-based products, we have the portfolio. Um, I'm sorry, uh, can you go back? Uh, somebody just switch my uh, slide, sorry for that. So uh, basically we have this hardware portfolio, including the certified SBCs. You may ask the question, so what is the difference between the certified SBCs here? Just to have, provide you a very short overview, what is the difference? Basically we have pure IP-based solution where all the two side of the, uh, the one and the LAN side is IP-based. And we have also some sort of hybrid approach, which I will explain a little bit later on the, on the, on the application diagrams, where we have the full feature SBC, but we also have some TDM ports on it. So it can be analog ports to integrate fax machines. It can be BRI or it can be PRI uh, for, uh, uh, for connecting PSTN or connecting legacy services. All right, so let's, uh, let's move ahead a little bit and let's look into the applications why i continuously i'm sorry uh, yes here you go with the application diagram the application diagram looks uh, as a first glance a little bit overwhelming the the reason is the versatility of the pattern sbc we are using it so as i just hinted before we have the tdm interfaces so basically you can you can connect on IP side LAN, you can connect uh, IP side the, the VAN side, you can connect to traditional PSTN, you can connect to legacy PBXs. So basically let's break down a little bit this application diagram into some, some more detail. Uh, the first uh, slide here, we show non-media bypass use cases. You may ask the question, what does it mean non-media bypass? The non-media bypass is a, is a terminology used by Microsoft. So basically here with the non-media bypass, they are referring that the media and the signaling is going a lot on the same IP pass, so they are going together. While in the media bypass scenario, uh, which is the opposite, the, uh, basically the media bypass the SBC and the signaling is going through the SBC. The most common application involves the non-media bypass use cases, and that's what we targeted in this certification program. So on the slide, basically, uh, you can see that uh, the SBC is connected on the LAN side with, uh, uh, with IP PBXs or whatever IP devices you can see on the customer premise. And on the other side, it connects to the public SIP trunk. And in the same way, uh, not just only to the SIP trunk, but also connects to the uh, Microsoft phone system. So basically the role of the SBC is to route the calls in between the all three destination, either on the LAN side or either on the SIP trunk side or to the Microsoft team side. You may notice that there is a small icon on top of the Microsoft phone system services, it's pattern cloud. So basically all of our products which, are, uh, which were involved in this certification program are pattern cloud orchestrated. So can be managed through the pattern cloud, but I will I will tell you a little bit more detail about the pattern cloud a few slides later. Just to sum up, so basically in this application, the SBC is used for SIP trunking. It's integrating the on-premise IP PBX. It provides the normal SIP security features, provides the SIP normalization. And with the pattern cloud, you can have the core quality monitoring and alerting. So you can go after the cases, uh, the, the, the problems proactively uh, using the pattern cloud. Then in the next application, uh, as I just hinted before, it, this is something what we call as the hybrid direct routing. Why it is hybrid? Because we are utilizing the TDM ports on the SBCs. We are very similar way. We are integrating the, uh, the IP PBX or the IP devices, which you have on the LAN side, but we are also able to integrate uh, legacy PBXs with, uh, with legacy uh, TDM ports. Here in this example, we use a PRI, uh, but it can be BRI or it can be analog ports for fax machines or whatever you can imagine to use the TDM port. 
Otherwise, the application looks very similar as before. So basically, the, the rule of the SBC here is to route between the SIP trunk, between the Microsoft telephony system, or the customer premise side. So we are providing SIP trunking, we are providing the uh, connection for legacy PBXs or legacy telephony equipments, and we are also connecting the on-premise IP PBX. The normal SIP features are coming with it, SIP security, SIP normalization, and with the utilization of the patent cloud, you can use it for call quality monitoring and alerting. But what, for what else you can use uh, the TDM ports? Uh, you may ask the question. The TDM ports can be used as a survivability failover feature. So in this example, uh, the TDM ports are uh, used uh, on one side, it's used towards to the legacy PBX on the customer premise, but the other TDM ports or the TDM port can be used towards to the PSTN and you can use uh, this route of the, for the calls uh, to use for emergency calls or for something else. So basically it provides a PSTN failover it provides priority call service for emergency calls, and it's coming with a feature of local SIP registrar. So what does it mean local SIP registrar? Basically the SIP devices on the customer premise are registered to the pattern SBC. Why it is good and why it is better that they are not registered to the IP PBX? Because with this, you can have the station to station or extension to extension calling, and still the extension is able to call out towards the PSTN direction. So that's what we use. In the modern times and in the recent times, uh, the service providers or the hosted service providers are moving into some sort of different direction when they are moving the SBC functionality out of the customer premise. So I'm just showing you the next slide, which is basically a, a complete software-based solution. Here in this application, we are using the, or virtual SBC to connect the SIP trunks from the service provider and connect the SIP trunk towards to the customer premise. And of course, it's doing the same direct routing uh, feature towards the Microsoft phone systems. As you can see, it's completely pattern cloud orchestrated. You may notice that the virtual SBCs, the instances are packed in the Microsoft Azure environment. So I would like to highlight here that why this centralized SBC uh, application is on the roadmap. The only reason is that uh, the virtual SBC is not yet available in Microsoft Azure marketplace, but don't worry about it. You can use the virtual smart node in Microsoft Azure. Uh, we, uh, we can install it manually to the Azure and basically uh, you can have it as a different sort of instances for different customers. So you can build a complete solution based on it. This is a common application for service providers who are moving the, uh, into the direction that there is no customer premise equipment needed to demarcation and stuff like that because they can handle everything from the cloud platform. You can replace the Microsoft Azure with some private cloud so it can be a virtualized environment which is sitting in the service provider data center and in the near, near future it can be also run uh, the, like in Amazon AWS and some other cloud service provider. All right, so, so let's sum up a little bit that what we were discussing about this centralized hosted SBC solution. As I just mentioned, so it's ideal for hosted service providers, no hardware required on the custom, customer premise. So it makes the installation easier because nobody needs to go on site. Uh, everything can be handled uh, uh, from, the, from the remotely. Uh, it's a scalable solution in Microsoft Azure Cloud. So basically you can have multiple instances with a lot of resources allocated for the SBC. Basically you can scale up to multi-thousand concurrent call with the different instances. So this is, a, uh, this is the solution for people who are really would like to move into the next level. Uh, it provides the direct routing, uh, routing support. It provides SIP trunking, SIP normalization, interoperability, SIP security. But in the recent time, as the uh, in the recent time that more and more people are working from home, uh, these centralized SBCs can be used as a VPN concentrator. So basically, every coworker who is using the uh, the home office, they can basically connect to the uh, Microsoft Teams system through or virtualized SBC with the VPN connection. All right, so uh, I was talking quite a lot about the pattern cloud. I mentioned quite a few times, so you may uh, get the clue that it's a management platform. 
Yes, you are right, but it's not just only a management platform. So it's it's provide a, a licensing pool, a centralized licensing pool for dynamic license allocations. So you can play around your concurrent co-licenses. You can play around with your VPN licenses between the uh, the, uh, the SBCs. Either they are on-premise SBCs like purpose-built hardware SBCs, or they are pure software solution SBCs. Uh, but not just only licensing server and not just only management, but it provides a complete alarming notification system. So basically, uh, you can set different elements which will trigger some alarm. And basically, based on this alarm, you can proactively go after the problems on your voice services. It's a pretty massive and a good solution for service providers or big uh, uh, big resellers who has multiple customers uh, under them. So uh, it provides a remote troubleshooting. So basically, you can access of the SBC from one single platform. Basically, doesn't matter whether it's the common line interface of the device or uh, the, uh, the the graphical user interface of the device. You can access from for both of them from the patent cloud. It provides warranty management. You can see when the warranties are expiring on your unit, and it provides also configuration adaptation. It helps a lot with provisioning, uh, zero touch provisioning. Uh, so basically, it has a built in redirection server, uh, uh, cloud wizard for easy install and uh, install progress monitoring. These are very good solutions. If you are still working with the on premise SBC and your technician is going on site, uh, he or she doesn't need to start the configuration from scratch. Uh, basically, there can be a wizard. Uh, a pattern wizard, which is a free service you can use. It's basically an XML file. And uh, uh, this XML file is uh, basically the simplification of the command line interface commands, which you would need to enter into the device. So it provides an additional ease of use. Uh, and the, the last but not least is the integration to some third party software, OSS, BSS software, business process integration. Uh, this can be done through the REST pool API of the Pattern Cloud. So basically, you can integrate it to your business processes. Pattern Cloud is coming with uh, four different versions or four different plans. Uh, as you can see on the picture, uh, the plans are different in terms of features. Uh, because of the time, I will not go through all of the features in this presentation, but I'm gladly answering your questions if you are contacting us on the sales uh, at patent.com or at the support at patent.com. But I highly encourage all of you guys that uh, uh, we are uh, promoting a 90 days free trial for Patent Cloud and for virtual smart node. So you can try immediately without the hardware investment, uh, your team solution or any other solution because we are not just limiting ourselves to the teams. Uh, it's a 90 days free trial and it's coming with the professional version. So basically all the features you can see on the picture will be enabled for your account. And if, of course, if you would have any question regarding to those, please feel free to contact support at patent.com. Uh, the patent cloud is coming with an additional brand new, very powerful feature, which is already not listed on here because it's really brand new is the land discovery tool. Uh, what does it mean, land discovery? Basically, uh, once you have the purpose-built hardware, the customer, prem uh, the SBC, which is on the customer premise, so you can scan the land network, uh, which are in the same routable, same, same subnet. So basically, you will see all the additional devices behind the SBC, and uh, you, through the SBC, basically, not just, and, with the utilization of the pattern cloud, you are not just only able to uh, manage the SBC itself, but basically on the same IP link, you are able to bring up the configuration uh, interface of the Snow phone, which I used in this uh, presentation as an example. So you don't need hundreds of other different uh, management tools to manage the devices behind the SBC. You need just only the pattern cloud, and you will be able to bring up the interfaces, the management interfaces of those IP devices. 
So those IP devices can be SIP phones, printers, IP PBX. The last not but least is Wi-Fi access point. So why it is good that you are you have access to your Wi-Fi access point is that you can use the Patent Cloud for alarming and notification, as I just mentioned before. It's the same stance for the Wi-Fi access point. So basically, when you uh, lose the connection to the Wi-Fi access point, you can trigger an alarm to the Patent Cloud, and basically you would be able to see that there is a problem with the Wi-Fi and you can proactively go after the problems. At the same with the printer, so basically you can use it uh, for uh, bringing up your printer. Okay, so just to sum up, sum up a little bit the feature sets. So once again, these features are not limited to Microsoft Teams. We are working also with other partners and other programs in interoperability terms. So just to sum up, these are basically features which are uh, available on every Trinity software-based devices. So it provides some direct routing, which is the main topic for our current presentation. But as I just hinted, so all of them are coming with an option for uh, TDM ports, VRI, E1, T1, FXS, FXO. With the FXS, uh, we just introduced a new type of interface for long reach. Uh, so it provides a 10 kilometer long reach on the FXS side. It supports message weighting indicator, AOC, you can manage through TechX server or TRO69. Uh, with the SIP registrar feature, basically you can integrate the non-Microsoft Teams certified devices. So those devices are registering to the Patent SBC. So from Microsoft Teams point of view, all the device behind the SBC, as long as they are registered to the SBC and routed through the SBC, they can be considered as a certified devices or can be used. Now, they will be not certified devices, but can be used with the Microsoft Teams. As I just hinted, so we are maintaining an extensive SIP interoperability partnership, which I will show you on the next slide that who else we are working with beside the Microsoft Teams. It provides a zero touch provisioning, which can be managed through the Patent Cloud. Uh, the Patent Cloud or, uh, or, or all of our Trinity devices, Patent Cloud orchestrated. Uh, we were discussing about the floating software feature licensing. Uh, it can be concurrent co-licensing, it can be VPN licensing, it can be routing licensing. So basically whatever uh, feature license you can imagine, you can, uh, you can distribute among the installed devices. Uh, you can proactively go after the, the problems with remote troubleshooting and with the core quality monitoring, you can get a clear picture uh, how your voice service looks like and whether it is really on a good quality or not. Uh, those devices not just only act as a voice SBC, but they are uh, uh, carrying on with the traditional IP router functionalities supporting various IP routing protocols, VRRP, GRE, RIP, and BGP. Uh, all of them is coming with a dual stack, IPv4, IPv6. So basically, uh, they, they can uh, work on both network or they can use as a gateway from IPv4 network to IPv6 network. Uh, it's coming with a built-in ACL uh, access control list and uh, it can use basically packet and protocol-based routing, quality of service management for upstream and downstream. They can act as a DHCP server or client providing NAP or PPPoE. All right, so just uh, uh, let's look through uh, basically the, uh, uh, the partners here. Uh, why I can, yes, here we go. So as I just hinted, so we are working extensively with our SIP interoperability partners. On this picture, you will see, you will recognize some very well-known name from the IPPBX or Unified Communication Market, like the Unify, uh, Asterisk, uh, 3CX, uh, SNOM, uh, Alcatel, Avaya, uh, beside, of course, the Microsoft traditional solutions for Microsoft Teams and Skype for Businesses, but not just only IPP, BX vendors, but also on the central side. So we are also working together with the uh, uh, soft, switch, soft switch or IMS vendors like Arnet, Cisco, uh, eventually Broadsoft became Cisco, so we can uh, say that it's Cisco, Metaswitch, Genben, Serpec, Huawei, you name it. So we are working with a lot of company here. And that's probably it from my side. I would like to give back the word for uh, Buddy. Uh, Buddy, if you uh, can take over the stuff and start to talk about the licensing.
All right, thank you, Miklos. Thank you for that great summary. Um, okay, so I'm going to get into the licensing, and then so now we understand what it can do and how it works, and and all of those sorts of things. Um, what I wanted to talk about here for a minute uh, at the end here is just how how that, that looks then for you as a customer. Uh, one of the things that we got a lot of feedback from the field about um, as we were working through our team's um, product development planning uh, was that what's in the market now is super complicated. All of the other solutions that are out there, there are other solutions. And, you know, when it comes to Microsoft certification, we all kind of, kind of whole purpose of certification puts us all on the same footing. So one of the things that we heard is how complicated it was um, setting up teams. Uh, with, with uh, particularly with other SBCs, there's a lot of different licensing, and it's this just ends up being pretty complicated. So what we wanted to do was try to simplify that. We went back to the drawing board with how we did our licensing model, and I just wanted to show you this here. It's a little bit in the weeds technically, but but, but I think you'll you'll see the value in it. So previously, before our team's um, offering, and, and this is also the way all of our competitors work too, is the way licenses get applied. Basically, if you look over here to the right, um, licenses create this code that then the software looks at as it's running to enable a feature. And so each license has its own code, and so you can enable different features within the software. Um, the way a lot of people have done it, uh, if you look in the center, they have individual licenses for each feature. So there might be a Teams Access license, there might be a TLS license needed, SRTP licenses needed all of those different things and, and configuring that can be, ordering it can be complicated, much less configuring it. Um, what we used to do here at Patent was bundle that together into a bundle. But the problem with those bundles is, uh, well, the good thing is it gives you a single ordering SKU to try to make at least the ordering side easy. But what we found, uh, some feedback from you guys, some of our customers, is that uh, in, in our cloud interface, uh, you can see all the licenses that, that you purchased but when it's a bundle, what you see in the cloud is actually the middle section there, all the individual licenses. And so that was confusing because um, I ordered this, but then this is what I see in my inventory. Um, also, when, when the licenses reorder, when it comes time to reorder licenses, um, the bundle is what you originally ordered, but then the individual licenses kind of get re reordered and renewed. And that, that causes confusion too. Um, and then the third thing is that, you know, these bundles then can be split up and distributed through our cloud platform. And then the functionality you thought you were getting because you maybe use that license somewhere else. Um, all of those things can cause, could cause confusion and complexity. So what we've done is we went back to the sort of back to the drawing board in terms of how our licenses can be done. And we've added what we call a multi multi-function license. So a single license key that activates multiple different features within the software. And at this point, it's pretty unique to patent. And, and, the, and the advantages of this is A, you still have the single SKU to order. What you see in the cloud or what you see in your license inventory will match what you've ordered. When it comes time to reorder or renew your licenses, you're re reordering exactly what you ordered in the beginning. Um, and it keeps all of the functionality you need to have teams working together so that they can't accidentally or inadvertently be split up and then you lose some functionality. So what that gets us to is what do you need for to work with teams with patent with a patent device? You need one license. Now here I show two, and, and the difference is uh, we have what we call permanent device-based licenses, which you know if in a situation, say a government facility where you don't really have access to a cloud, um, you can load the licenses directly on the device. It stays with the device, the device permanently. It can't be moved around. It's tied to that device's uh, serial number. So that's one way to do it. The way that we would recommend, it's the easiest way, the best way is a cloud-based license. So as, again, it's only one license. If you have, if your device is connected to the cloud, you can order this cloud-based uh, device license. And like Miklos pointed out, it's actually a floating license. Um, so it can be, it goes into basically your organization's inventory of licenses, and then it can be applied to whichever device you want. And if you decide to change something, uh, you can take that licenses and move it. Uh, it's the whole nature of floating licenses. So the thing, the, the thing to remember is when you want to set up a patent device for Teams, there's one license to buy. 
very, very simple. So this license um, covers uh, the TLS functionality, and it also opens up SRTP on the entire device um, to make it simple. So it's not individual channels. You don't have to do all kinds of math and calculations to figure out what you need and take a guess. Um, everything you need for teams to work is there. Now, the other thing that we did to make things simple is we instituted this uh, service SKU that you see there at the bottom of the screen. This is a professional services for up to three hours of MS Teams integration support. We highly recommend this again. Um, you, you can do it yourself, um, but it is complex and we have lots of experience. Our FAEs are top of the game. Uh, they're excellent. Uh, they know exactly how to do this. They've done it a bunch of times and we can help you. And so what we recommend is as you're ordering a, an MS Teams license, also get this um, professional service SKU. Um, and that's going to be your fastest way to get up and running easily um, with Teams. And so what we were hoping to do is um, that's you know, one of our key differentiators is, is the ease of installation and the ease of setup for Microsoft Teams. So there's three simple steps. Um, activating Teams on, a, on an S, patent SBC is, is pretty easy. So you have to start with an SBC. That's an assumption. So if you're not familiar with the patent devices, we have gateways. Some of our gateway, analog gateways can be um, through some licensing. You can actually convert those into an SBC. They can actually be upgraded uh, through software to become an SBC. So the assumption is you're starting with an SBC because you need the functionality of the SBC to begin with. Uh, for teams to work. So that's just like an initial assumption, it's not even a step. So then you're going to apply one of the licenses, either the permanent device license or the cloud license, just a single license to the device. And then you can use the the service uh, SKU that we said to, to work with our team and get things up and running. One of the things we have is an initial questionnaire that's a sort of a checklist that you'll get. Um, gives you everything step by step that you have to check. Do you have uh, your TLS certificate, do you have, you know, your team set up, you know, all of the basic fundamental things that you need to have checked off. And then by the time you call us, it's going to be up and running quick uh, with the help of our team. Now, again, if, if you're somebody that wants to try to do it on your own, we do have some wizards provided with some instructions. Um, and we have some video content that's, that's continuing to come out. We currently have um, at least one video on our um, YouTube channel that um, describes step by step, starting out with the wizard, how to apply the wizard, how to load it, how to configure uh, your device for Teams uh, step by step. And it's just a few minute, you know, maybe what four or five minute video or something like that um, that shows you how to step through it. So that's one way to do it. But we definitely, definitely recommend leveraging our team uh, who really knows how to get this done fast. So to review what um, Miklos had was talking about in terms of he had the long list of products. These are all the products um, that support teams in some fashion or another. So um, one thing to keep in mind here is when it says team sessions, and a lot of times you, you look at uh, SBCs in terms of a you know, number of concurrent calls and those sort of stats. Keep in mind that you know every uh, leg of a call is being encrypted with SRTP. So <clears throat> Because of that, it uses additional resources. And so the number of team sessions, it's going to be a little less, it's going to be somewhat less uh, than you know, your, your call capacity on that device. So that's you know, why we're, we're listing that separately in here. Um, so the transcoding SBCs are fully certified. Those are the fully certified Microsoft Teams certified devices. Um, Non-transcoding all IP SBCs, we have a, a couple of those, uh, including our virtual smart node. Now those can be set up if, if say, if your transcoding is already being done by your PBX. Um, these devices still can get up and get you connected to Teams. Uh, and the bottom list there is our gateways that I discussed. So um, there's some of our gateway, you know, and each of those base models have various different SKUs um, with different port combinations and things like that. But those are the devices that can be upgraded to an SBC, and then also enabled for Teams. So a quick overview of the licenses. Um, one, of, one of the two, depending on whether you want a permanent license loaded on the device that stays with the device, or do you want a cloud-based license uh, 
that can be floated across your inventory of devices. Once you have that decision, you buy the one license. There's the uh, service SKU. But the only additional thing that you might have, so all of our devices come with a, a default number of calls, um, SIP sessions um, included with the device. If you want more than what's included, you will have to buy additional SIP sessions, but that's, that's basic with any SPC. Um, in terms of teams, all you need is one license. And then if you want additional team seats, because the TLS and the SRTP are device, cover the entire device, all you have to do is add SIP sessions, and those can also be utilized in teams. So here's a list of some of our teams related resources. That video I mentioned is the, is the one there in a the column by itself on the right. Um, I have a couple of questions in here related to is this webinar going to be uh, later for review and, and the slides? Yes, all of that will be sent out as a follow up email from our marketing team. Uh, you'll be able to get not only the, uh, the recording, um, but uh, the slide deck as well. So that's kind of wraps up the, the content portion um, that gets us to our Q&A. And there are a bunch of good questions in here. Uh, somebody else I want to uh, introduce you to is Bojan Radovic, who is uh, another one of our uh, FAEs, who's one of the people you might um, interact with um, on that service queue. Um, and he's going to help with some of the questions uh, along with Miklos. Um, I'm going to go ahead through and answer some of the ones that are more product management, and then I'm going to turn over some of the questions to them uh, when they get a little bit more technical. Um, so somebody asked if there's a comparison of unique features versus other SBCs. We do have um, here in product management, I've had, we have a bunch of that uh, information. Um, there's a lot of, lot of them. So what I would ask is, um, I believe my email is here at the last line. Yeah. Uh, you can either send to sales at pat, patent.com or if you want to email me directly um, with, particularly if you have an interest uh, in a particular SBC, uh, let me know and we can put, put some comparisons together for you. Um, unfortunately, somebody had asked about a dial-in number, but uh, GoToWebinar does not have that functionality. Um, the slides we will send, a copy of the uh, webinar again, is uh is going to be sent out afterwards so from there miklos you can see all the questions correctly is that correct yeah i do uh, so i'm just going to read them all and why don't you go ahead and take, take over and, and uh, step through some of those more technical questions if you yeah let me let me jump on them so can you support extension on third-party handsets uh, shown uh, can you support third-party handsets on things such as uh, cisco 88000 series uh, yes, we do. So that's basically uh, basically one of the purpose of using the SIP registrar. As long as those devices are uh, using the IP uh, interface and connect to SIP, so basically those devices can register to our SBC, and the SBC will do the rest of the routing. So to take it short, yes, you can use IP handsets with the SBCs. And maybe uh, if I can jump in here, uh, yeah. be close. Uh, yes, maybe please. the question is also related to to uh, SIP devices like like Yealink or similar or Cisco whatever, uh, which have a dual stack, you know, with with a part for for uh, Microsoft Teams, and uh, those devices are directly to be certified with Teams directly. So, uh, if this is the question related to this point, uh, this. It, it's not directly related to the SBC functionality, but uh, if the device is to be registered on our SBC, then there is no issue. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Boyan. Mm -hmm. And maybe to the previous question uh, about the unique pattern features versus other SBCs, if we summarize what was uh, explained in one of the first slides uh, where we have quite feature-rich uh, SBCs, and compared to our competition, we are very cost-effective because our SBCs are, uh, at first, uh, they, they aim the CPE market, so enterprise customers. So compared with uh, some, uh, some, let's say, big vendors uh, uh, whose aim is especially uh, the service provider market, we are much uh, more, uh, more cost-effective, but uh, 
offering in this uh, sense the same uh, level of service for Microsoft Teams direct routing. And as Miklos explained, we have uh, hybrid models, so we can integrate uh, very easily uh, not only IP PBXs, but also legacy, legacy PBX uh, that do not have any trunk possibility, ship trunk possibility, or also through the FXS uh, gateway functionality, we can integrate uh, analog phones and faxes. Okay, let's go sure. on with the questions. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, Boyan, if you uh, like to grab mm -hmm. technical questions, uh, you are more than welcome to do so. Is... Yeah, I saw what is the dial-in number for the audio. I guess this oh, is yeah, related we... to the yeah, webinar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, could you support extensions on third-party handsets? Okay, this is more or less related to the same question as before. So uh, let's skip to the next one. Uh, Cisco call manager integration available. So uh, actually we did also the test with uh, one or two IPPBX vendors uh, and the principle is exactly the same for Cisco call manager. So we have on our website available a configuration guide uh, in which we have a template for the configuration for direct routing without IPPBX and with IPPBX because the configurations are slightly different. And for Cisco call manager, of course, you would have to consider the configuration for IPPBX, in which we actually offer the possibility to integrate the IPPBX extensions so that you can have a dual ring functionality when you have incoming calls, uh, it would, uh, uh, both devices would ring. So your, uh, your uh, main system device on uh, Cisco call manager and your team's client. And vice versa, you can make outgoing calls either from your Cisco device or from your team's client. Then we have a question that's quite special. Uh, will this platform allow me to eliminate the need for the software call to Teams? So uh, I roughly have a, had a look because I was not really aware about uh, call to Teams and it seems to be a, a server-based uh, solution integrating Teams with uh, with, uh, with an existing PBX infrastructure. So uh, actually with in general with Teams direct routing, uh, you can integrate, you can fully integrate the telephony of your existing PBX. Uh, it may be that call to Teams offers some some additional uh, services. Uh, we, we are not really aware. We should really uh, have a look. But at least for all uh, telephony-based, uh, let's say, integration into the PSTN network, uh, Teams direct routing with an SBC from Patton uh, is completely enough. So it just comes to the questions because I'm just looking through the website of call to Teams. There are some spe specific um, features uh, like uh, mix PBX and trunk. Okay, this is also possible with direct routing, but call center compatible and presence sharing from Teams. I guess this, that such functions are really uh, some add-on values from call to teams that for, for which you would still need call to teams. But if it deals only about integrating um, your uh, IPPBX with uh, teams for pure telephony features, uh, then uh, direct routing with Python SBC is fully enough. Then, so I, see a, I see a question from Peter, who's a 3CX uh, engineer uh, who he says he's using SN4141 on, on the patent cloud and loves it. So I, we'd love to hear that. That's not a question, but I did want to read that aloud. <laughs> it says it minis minimizes okay. his time and saves a lot on labor. <clears throat> okay, and then also related to the same participant, uh, there was another question, uh, namely, uh, does this platform uh, also allow us to support multiple customers? So. This is something that we have on the roadmaps. So this, this is called the multi-tenant uh, uh, support. And for this, there is a specific uh, recommendation or a special uh, uh, specification of Microsoft that uh, we still have to uh, 
dig in and uh, there is some special requirement for that. We have it on our roadmap because we have um, high performance SBCs that can support much more uh, simultaneous sessions. And for those SBCs, it's absolutely, it, it absolutely makes sense to, to support this, but uh, this is something we have to uh, uh, estimate uh, and, and to, to provide a solution for that. So uh, for, the, for the real, let's say pure customer side, IPPBX side, there is, there is no issue. We support this fully, but uh, for the Microsoft uh, tenant side there is some uh, software improvement to do so this is why we are working on it um we have, about about the, yeah, we have a question about the sn500 um, unfortunately sn500 is here to be a, a low cost um, for small and home office type applications and it just doesn't have a horsepower to support teams Um, why do we need a SBC license on the gateway? Um, you don't, unless you need an SBC. So in other words, our SBCs are, our gateways are flexible enough that, you know, as your needs grow, as your needs change, uh, they can be converted. They, you, you don't, but you don't need to have, uh, any SBC license unless you want teams because we need the functionalities of, of, of an SBC on the gateway. <clears throat> um, Actually, uh, we can add something here. It's because in a pure gateway, you don't have the functionality of uh, the IP router, and uh, I think TLS is also in separate. Sure. Have to check that, yeah, and uh, the registrar as well. So, if you want to make IP to IP uh, with uh, the IP routing functionality, you have to add this uh, SBC uh, license. This is the, let's say the 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 requirement before you start using uh, the SBC functionality, but if you need only only uh, the pure gateway functionality, it's not necessary. Okay, um, there's a question about whether or not the permanent license can be moved around uh, to a new replacement. Um, if the unit if you have to replace the actual unit because it's damaged for some reason, um, yeah, we can, we can, you don't have to repurchase that license, but it is a permanent license tied to that serial number and would have to, it would have to come through tech support to be able to get a license moved on a device. And it would really only be in the case of, you know, if that unit is damaged for some reason. Um, but no, that's where the cloud based feature license is nice because they float and you can move them from device to device very easily. I always recommend that that method is, is really the best. So uh, next question is about media bypass and transcoding and which codecs are supported. Um, I know Miklos went into some details about that. Um, if you want additional um, information on, on direct routing, uh, we can provide you with some more resources, but I didn't want to, I know we got some time sensitivity, so I don't want to take up too much time with that. Um, but Maybe one of you guys can talk about the codec issue. Um, the codec question is which codecs are supported? Uh, and, and Microsoft's moved to a SAT codec. Uh, all right. So uh, uh, regarding to the codecs, we, we, we support the most common codecs. Uh, with regarding to the setting codecs, uh, this is currently not the requirement from Teams to support it. So we do not have it yet. But as long as the Microsoft is uh, is not taking as much, so once the once the Microsoft will do the hard move to the setting codec, we will certainly we will have it. So, but currently this is not a requirement from Microsoft to use it. Uh, the what is required from Microsoft is to bypass not the setting but the seal codec, uh, and uh, we support the bypass of the seal codec. Okay. Um. So is SBC questions. able to generate comfort noise? Yes, uh, they is able to generate comfort noise. Uh, it's just if I can just simply answer this. Uh, multi-tenancy, that's probably Boyan already addressed the multi-tenancy, so it's coming very soon. Right. 
for 3CX, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I missed something. Do we have any roadmap for SBA for teams with Patton Gateway and SBC? Uh, this is something which is ongoing discussion. So uh, we can let you know in a later time about the SBA support. For 3CX, this allows us to conduct Teams meeting using our trunks uh, and DID is in 3CX, correct? Uh, wait, this is 3CX. This allows us to conduct Teams meetings using our trunks and DID is in 3CX. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's the answer is yes. Yeah, it's just a good feedback. Thank you for Frank, can we register non-certified Teams devices such as SIP door phones, SIP paging devices to SBC uh, so that we can use them with Teams? Yeah, the, the answer is, is yes. So that's what we uh, discussed with the SIP registrar functionality. So basically enabling non-certified devices to the Microsoft Teams, registering those devices to the SBC directly. So answer is yes. Are you certified with Mitel PBX? Uh, we uh, we did some certification with the Mitel PBX, and uh, we have extensive deployment with Mitel PBXs. Uh, but uh, uh, so yeah, theoretically the answer is yes. Uh, but we need to look into the exact model from the from the Mitel to answer it properly. Basically, just to we add something, yes? yeah, yeah, related yes, to this question. Yeah. We 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 have the let's say we have a big partnership with one uh, big uh, German vendor of IPPBX, and we did um, uh, let's say higher and extensive integration with this one. And uh, I had recently also projects in France with uh, with Mitel uh, and Teams, and actually we we apply the same logics uh, that we use for other IPPBXs so that we can integrate uh, Teams direct routing also with Mitel. So we, we were able to uh, to uh, make a successful project, and um, then we also have uh, integrated Mitel in the, the classical way in the past, uh, for, for let's say with our gateways. But now we have also templates uh, for Mitel for Microsoft Teams. Okay, I, I just want to jump in here real quick. We're, we're coming up on an hour, and I know we want to respect everybody's time. But we also have some really good questions. There's about a half a dozen questions left. And we'll go ahead and go through and answer those questions. So if you want to hang out and get those answers, um, we'll do that. Um, but for everybody else, if you have to jump, we certainly understand. We're, we're really grateful for you coming and attending our webinar today. Um, like I said, we're going to go ahead and, and get through the rest of these questions. Um, so if you have one out there, hang in there, and we're going to go. We're going to get to it. <clears throat> So the next next question. Um, so basically, we want to use our PBX with Teams, but not interested in the Microsoft PBX. Does Patent support this, guys? Yeah, that that so that's really the the crux of of why we're doing this and what our SBC does is the, yeah, it allows that interoperability. Um, so the answer is yes. Well, you guys want to take the next one? Seeing video. Make one. Uh, where we are? How does the pattern device handle the re refer messages for Microsoft Teams? Uh, that's the right. Uh, that's where we are, right? So, or uh, did I miss yeah. something? Yeah. Uh, Boyan, it's uh, it's. Uh, can you just can you a this? second? I'm not downloading the questions because somehow I don't see them in, in real time. Uh, okay, how does the patent device handle the refer messages for Microsoft? Uh, actually, we we uh, they seem to oddly formatted. Right, right. Yeah, the <laughs> the question is they seem to be oddly formatted and uh, actually we. We do. We still do not support their special format of the refer messages. But um, uh, there are two ways of of uh, supporting uh, those uh, call scenarios, and we support, let's say, the classical one with the reinvite, uh, which is, uh, let's say, absolutely tolerated also by Microsoft uh, to pass this uh, certification. But we are working also on the way to support their specific format of uh, of refer messages. 
I, I do see what you, you are talking about, uh, but yes, there, there are some specific fields uh, in their refer header that, that we have to comply in the future, but this was not, uh, uh, let's say, mandatory because there are two possible options uh, for the related call scenario. Okay, what do we have else? Next question. Licensing. Okay, high availability. Yeah, high availability. We have just, uh, uh, let's say, we have a VRRP based solution with high availability, which is not really hot, hot standby, but it's uh, we have an active and a backup uh, unit. And uh, this, uh, you just have to keep in mind that uh, in case of failure of the main unit, there is a traffic interruption of about three to, to five seconds until the second unit gets up and uh, uh, can handle uh, calls. Okay, I, uh, at the moment I don't see further questions. Do you, buddy? So there's a, um, we have a few more questions, but uh, I think when, when uh, we are uh, end of our time, so uh, I think uh, what we can do is that we have a few more questions left, but we can reach out to those individuals because we have the questions registered. Right. And uh, we, will, we, will, we will reach out to you guys with an email or with a phone call to answer your questions. Uh, just to just to keep the time because we are really one minute over our scheduled time. So sorry for that. But all the questions will be answered through some separate uh, email. And I highly encourage everybody uh, to ask more questions. You are free to reach out to support at patent.com with all of your technical questions. Or if you would have any sales or licensing related question, please reach out to sales at patent.com and uh, you will have your question properly addressed. Again, thank you from all of us, and we appreciate your time today. Uh, that's all, and the webinar. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.